commands. I'm not exaggerating. The performance was horrific. Even though we got the result, the performance was horrific. But I cannot pinpoint why it was that horrific. Odegaard couldn't control the midfield. Uh, uh, Pate was very average. Xhaka was very average. Jesus had the worst game in a national shirt. I've never seen Jesus this poor. Not he was sticking. He wasn't controlling. His dribbling was off the pace. So I don't know what was going on. Matanelli looks very jaded and tired. Saka had a bit of spark, even though he scored the goal. But there was something off about the game. Second half, I was thinking we will improve on the, on the first half of performance, which was not here or there. Second half was more and more diabolical, more pedestrian, more lethargy. We couldn't even string five passes together. We couldn't. We even considered penalty Soliba. What was Soliba trying to do? I understand that he has this confidence as a defender, but sometimes he is pushing it this thus far. But do you know what? I'm not going to criticize Soliba because I believe when you take those kind of higher risk and high reward, once in a while those things will not uh, come off the way you want it. So I'm not going to overly criticize Soliba. It's part of the game. Soliba is a fantastic defender. I'm not going to call him out for anything. He has been. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you like this channel, make sure you subscribe and you like the content. It's very important for you to subscribe. Make sure you stick a like on the video while you're watching them or watching it. Very important for the algorithm. And make sure you turn on the notification bell. Check it again and make sure it's turned on. So when I go live, you can get notified. And when I post a pre-recorded videos, you can get notified. Apologies, I couldn't do a live reaction to the match reaction this afternoon. It was due to certain factors beyond my control. And I apologize for that, even though I put it out there. So let's talk about the match. Match lead zero as now one. What's a match? I had to hold my nail throughout the match. It was one of those matches that I couldn't understand what was going on. It looked like the boy were fatigued, the pace was pedestrian. Aside from the first half, that, even though the first half lead came on hard onto us, but we managed to ride it. But the second half, it was, in my opinion, a total dominance from leads. Now, before we get to that part, let's let's start again. Let, let, let's 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 back up. Let's back up a bit. So, looking at the lineup, uh, as I started leading the line, Jesus was past fit. He started uh, Martinelli, Odegaard, and Saka at the front uh, behind Jesus. Jacques and Pate uh, behind Martinelli, Odegaard, and Saka. Then our uh, defensive unit was Tomiasa at the left back, which was a, which was a shock to me. Uh, Gabriel Magalhães at the as the centre half. Uh, Soliba at centre half and White as a right back, and Ramsdale, the goalkeeper. Now, everybody was complaining. I went on Twitter. People were like, just surprised. Because if you look at my preview, I was calling for uh, Quarantine to come back as a left back because I just, in my, in my mind, like, this is, this should be a game for Quarantine, not Tomiyasu. I don't see any threat, apparently, from uh, whoever is going to occupy uh, the right side of Leeds' attack. So, bringing in Tomiyasu again instead of Quarantine was a bit kind of, Iffy to me, but I have to respect the, the authority of Arteta. He's the manager. He knows why he's playing uh, Tomiyasu there, so I got to respect it. Now, let's get into the match. Our performance was absolutely dire. It was a shitty performance, let's be real. Whatever happened, I don't know. I don't know if the boys were tired. Yes, we had seven changes in midfield, and we had a very poor performance against uh, Boda Glens. I was thinking this perform the performance at this weekend, which was a few hours ago, should be better, right? But this performance was is the worst I've seen from Arsenal uh, in the ten Premier League, Premier League games we've played this season. This is simply a horrific performance. I'm not exaggerating. The performance was horrific, even though we got the result. The performance was horrific. But I cannot pinpoint why it was that horrific. Or the guy couldn't control the midfield. Uh, uh, Pate was very average. Xhaka was very average. Jesus had the worst game in a national shirt. I've never seen Jesus this poor. Not he was sticking. He wasn't controlling. His dribbling was off the pace. So I don't know what's going on. Matanelli looks very jaded and tired. Saka had a bit of spark, even though he scored the goal. But there was something off about the game. Second half, I was thinking we will improve on the, on the first half of Mars, which was not here or there. Second half was more and more diabolical, more pedestrian, 
more lethargy. We couldn't even string five passes together. We couldn't. We even considered a penalty Soliba. What was Soliba trying to do? I understand that he has this confidence as a defender, but sometimes he, he's pushing it this thus far. But do you know what? I'm not going to criticize Soliba because I believe when you take those kind of high risk and high reward, once in a while, those things will not uh, come off the way you want it. So I'm not going to overly criticize Soliba. It's part of the game. Soliba is a fantastic defender. I'm not going to call him out for anything. He has been terrific. So one or two mistakes well, does not change my opinion of him. Now, Gabriel Magalhães almost cost us the match at the end of the game. I'm going to call it out. Almost cost us the match. But at the same time, the over-the-top exaggerative criticism of him is getting annoying. What is wrong with the online Arsenal fans? What is wrong with you guys? Like, yes, he has made a few mistakes leading to this game in the past game. But making him making one mistake per game that is not costing us, I get it. You should be concerned. But I'm not going to subscribe to the the thought or the conversation narrative that it should be dropped. No, he's our best left-sided defender, central defender. Yeah, I'm not dropping him. I don't care if you compare him to Mustafi or David Lewis or Socrates. Now, come on. Let, 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 let's boil it down to what football is. When you win games, it, the team that makes the less mistake are the team that win games. Let's be real. M mistakes are part and parcel of the game. Most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, it's very key to, to understand what I'm, I'm making. Most of the time, the team with the less mistake, mistakes win the game. For you to think that don't be mistakes in, a, in any game, you are insane. You are insane to think that don't be mistakes. How, okay, if there are no mistakes, where do, how do goals come about? Answer that question. If there are no mistakes from both teams, how do goals come about? Somebody must make a mistake for the opposition to get a goal. It's about mistake. Now, like I said a, a while ago, it's the team that makes the less mistakes. I win the game most of the time. But I'm, I must agree, Arsenal rode their luck today. Now, for Arsenal fans to be pushing this narrative that Gabriel most cost us the game, which I agree, almost cost us the game, but it didn't cost us the game. Now, there was a foul on Gabriel that led to him kicking out. I don't agree with him kicking out. I think he got away with that. But before that, there was an event. There was a pushing. There was a shoving that occurred. For Arsenal fans to call that soft and try to push a narrative because they want to push Gabriel out of the team for for some for whatever reason they, they have is insanity. These are opposition fans doing this. Arsenal fans, people that call themselves Arsenal fans, actually pushing a narrative to get Gabriel out. That was a bloody foul on Gabriel. Now, did he kick out? Yes, I think got away with that. I'm happy the red card was rescinded. It was recalled. And the penalty was cancelled. And I'm happy for that. And Gabriel should learn from that. But for you to start massively calling for Gabriel to be dropped, one of our best defenders. I'm saying he's one of our best defenders. The, the, the entitlement and the ungratefulness of the of Arsenal fans this, this season is just... It's just is laughable and it's comedic, to say the least. I am not here pandering for, for Gabriel. He has made mistakes. But making one making the average of one mistake per game, I'm saying it. Yeah, I'm what I'm I, just calm down. I know someone is going to come at me. He's, he has made just one mistake per, for the last five games. But it doesn't cost us. I'm not saying or advocating for him to continue to make this mistake. I'm saying. Mistakes are part of the game. Hopefully, he can iron it, iron those mistakes out of his game permanently. But if you look at other things he does, the blocks, winning the area drill, uh, duels, the aggressiveness, the one-on-one -on -one marking. Gabriel is one of the best, not only the Premiership, in my opinion, in Europe. Like, Soliba made mistakes today. He considered the penalty. Nobody is calling out Soliba. Soliba considered the pen uh, penalty, uh, uh, sorry, scored an own goal the other time. Stoliba last week, 
was culpable for the Femio goal against Liverpool. Nobody's talking about that because Soliba is the fans' favorite. So let's leave him out. But Gabriel is not the fans' scapegoat. So let's get him out. Let's continue to push this narrative. Let's continue to get our delay fix of controversy. Some of your fans only thrive with controversies. I guess that's dysfunctional to the, to the Arsenal fan base. I'm not saying all of you, but there's a light, loud, light, let me keep, let me say, let me repeat myself. There's a loud, large minority of fans on online fan on platforms who push narratives on Twitter and on YouTube for likes and for views. They're not doing it because of the objective of the game. It's just for likes and views. Let's go, let's go what it is. Let's go what it is. I'm not defending Gabriel that he hasn't made mistakes, but the way this mistake has been exaggerated. And I'm happy your opinion, everybody's free to have an opinion, but they're just one manager, which is Ateta. And I'm sure your opinion will not move the needle when it comes to Ateta uh, picking his team. Your opinion don't matter. Gabriel trains Ateta. Ateta sees him all the time. Ateta, I'm sure, will continue to pick him because he's one of our best defenders. All this call for Tomiyasu to come in for him is absolutely bollocks. I'm not saying Tomiyasu might not do a fantastic job, but I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that Gabriel we actually write out this wave of uh, one mistake per game. I'm not covering up for Gabriel. I'm saying he has made a mistake. He's making mistakes, but the mistakes have not cost us. And if you look at it generally, you look at it overall, is Gabriel a liability? I would say no. It's a different thing. He was making two to three or five big mistakes per game. There's definitely, I would have to take him out. He is not making two to five mistakes per game. He has just made one mistake in the last five games, which is unacceptable. I get it. They say it should be a standard. But mistakes are part of the game. And these mistakes have not cost us. If you compare the mistakes to the defensive defensive duties he gives and the balance he gives to the team, which one would you rather pick? No, 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 no. Because we have to be sensible here. If you look at the mistakes he has made compared to the other good things he does with the team, the defensive stability he gives to the team, his aggressive tackling, his blocks, winning his, his area uh, duels, is the one on one duels, the balance he has with Soliba. We should sacrifice that because he made one of he's making one mistake per game. You are insane. And I, I stand by it. You want to call me out, call me out objective in the comment section. I'll respond to you respectfully. Let's make it respectful. We are all adults, and I'll and I'll and I'll debunk your argument respectfully too. Gabriel is one of our best defenders, and he's not going anywhere yet. Whether you like it or not, he's not a Mustafi, he's not a David Lewis, he's not a Socrates. I'm going to read, read my son, I'm saying like a broken record. Does he make mistake per game? One, one mistake per game? Yes. He's still young, he's 24, and I'm sure with time and experience, he will iron out this mistake out of his game permanently. Give me a chance. Arsenal fans should be more forgiving towards their players. You should not be riding or calling me, calling him Bozo, just like the way Manchester City or Manchester United fans or the rival fans are doing. You should be an Arsenal fan. Support your player. I'm not saying give your players blind support. I'm not calling for blind support or blind loyalty. I'm calling for objectivity. Compare and contrast what he does compared to the mistake one or one or two, one or two at most two mistakes he makes in a game. Come on. What he gives to the team is far, far superior to the mistakes you guys are nitpicking. Like I said, if you like this channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stick a like on the video, turn the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next one.